Hello everyone, my name is Andy Barninger and today we're going to do a pomegranate Baja fish taco. To begin, what we need to do is preheat the oven. So we're going to preheat it to 425. Next, we're going to line a sheet pan with parchment paper. And this essentially is what we're going to be cooking the fish tacos on. Well, the fish for the fish tacos. What we're going to be using is we're going to be using tilapia. So tilapia, super common bodybuilder food. Um, it's a lighter white fish. It's a little bit more meatier, but super low fat and super high protein. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to take this recipe serves two. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about eight ounces of tilapia and we're going to cut that into about quarter inch strips. So quarter inch by it, meaning quarter inch in kind of quarter inch squares, about four inches long. And it doesn't need to be pretty because we're actually going to bread it and bake it. So as you can see, it's about a quarter inch by quarter inch by three to four inches long. Next, we're going to set that aside. So as I said, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bake this tilapia. So we have our tilapia here. We have our panko breadcrumbs. This is gonna be our breading. In addition to that, we have our egg wash. So kind of take the order of operations. Our egg wash is essentially just one egg whisked with about two to three tablespoons of water and our panko Breading is a quarter cup of breadcrumbs with a taste tablespoon of salt. So super simple, super easy to make. And what we're gonna do is simple operation right here. So we're going to take our fish, dump it in the egg wash, then make sure it's nicely coated in the panko breadcrumbs. It's not going to be coated very heavily because normally what you would do is actually you would take your egg wash, dip it in flour, back in the egg wash, then into the pancro. But what I wanna do is I wanna kinda of keep the breading at a minimal, but give that nice crisp to it. So we're just doing the one step, which is just the egg wash and the panko. If you would like a thicker breading on it, what you could do is what I'm about to show you is just basically put in the egg wash into the panko, back into the egg wash, then back into the panko. That'll give you a little bit of a thicker breading on it. But this is going to be a light dish with a lot of light foods, light aromatic and refreshing citrus fruits. So I want to keep the panko and breading to a minimal. And what you can do is if you don't want to use panko breadcrumbs, um, you can make your own. You can make essentially whole wheat breadcrumbs if you'd like. All you have to do is really take whole wheat bread, maybe oats, and crisp them or toast them. You could do that in the oven in a toaster, throw it into a blender and just grind them up and you can make your own breadcrumbs. But what I like about the panko is they're already made, they're easy to use, and they taste great, especially when seasoned properly. Before we put the fish in the oven, we're gonna take one last step. We're gonna take this lime, we're gonna roll it. So what rolling does is it actually loosens up the lime so it's not as stiff when you cut into it. And what that's gonna do is so we can actually get the juice out of it. So we took that lime, rolled it, and now we're just gonna cut it into quarters. And we're gonna take one of those quarters and essentially just sprinkle it over the fish. So again, it's gonna add just another layer of flavor as we go along. There we go, now we're gonna take this and throw it in the oven. And we're gonna do it for about six to six to nine minutes. So set our timer. And normally with a range of times, what you wanna do is go with the lowest range. So I said six to nine. So we're gonna start at six minutes, check it at six minutes. If it needs an additional two or three, we're gonna bump it up. For the toppings on our tacos, we're actually going to make kind of a chutney that's gonna to be topped with an orange vinaigrette. So for this, we're going to need an orange, a pomegranate, two Roma tom tomatoes, 
one half of the lime that we cut earlier, about one green onion, and some cilantro. So to begin, what we're going to do is just take this green onion and you can chop it any way you would like. I like doing it on a bias. And what I, what I like about the bias is the fact that it just looks prettier. So, so we're gonna throw that into our bowl. Next, we're gonna take our Roma tomatoes. We're going to top, cut the core off on both of them. Cut them in half lengthwise. And you can do this part if you'd like, it's not necessary. But if you look at a tomato, it has kind of the, the seeds and a lot of the, the fluids on the inside. For any type of chutney or sauce, what I like doing is actually pulling that out. Um, if you go to like Mexico or something, they'll normally keep that in and that keeps kind of makes like a pico de gallo um, a lot more liquid. But for the fact that we're putting it on a taco, um, I don't want the extra moisture to make the taco shell too wet and make the taco shell fall apart. So quick and easy method just to pull it out. You literally just cut it out. And I'm using a chef's knife. Um, if you're not well versed with using a chef's knife, you could use something such as a paring knife, which a lot smaller, just to cut that core out. And when you're doing stuff like this, it's always good to keep like a bowl around that you can throw all your waste in. So you're not always running to the garbage can or, and your dirt, and your cutting board stays pretty fairly clean. So once you've cored those tomatoes, what you're gonna do, pretty simple, easy method, is we're just gonna dice them. So cut them into strips, and the strips are gonna be about a quarter inch long. Then you're gonna turn, turn your stack and cut them in, into cubes. So these cubes will be about a quarter inch or by quarter inch by quarter inch. And that's our fish. So we're gonna turn around and check this out. So I'm actually going to. So as you can see with our fish, it's not as caramelized as I would like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop back in the oven for about two minutes um, just to brown it a little bit more. And then we're gonna pull it out. So next we're going to take a red onion we're gonna remove the, the top off of this red onion. Discard that. And then pull the shell off of it. And a little quick tip to pull the shell off. If you, take, if you take the top off and then take like a paring knife or a chef's knife and just run it down this edge right here. Kind of going kind of slightly into the onion. It gives you a nice place to actually peel the skin off part fairly quickly and another another kind of tip or little piece of information is a lot of people don't like cutting onions because it makes them cry well what makes kind of what's going on there is when you bruise the onion with by using maybe a dull knife that's what makes you cry so if you use a sharp knife for example my chef's knife here it's actually going to be much quicker to cut the onion and it won't make you cry as much. You're still gonna have a little bit going on there, but it won't be as, as bad as if you would use a dull knife. So we're actually not gonna use very much of this onion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut down through the top of it, kind of like that. Take this right here and we're, we're only gonna have about three, two or three tablespoons here. Use as much as you'd want, you want if you like onions or not. Um, if you don't like them, use a little bit less. If you do like them, use a little bit more. But I like red onions, so what we're gonna do is about two tablespoons, and I'm gonna cut a little bit off right here, set that aside. And as you saw, I didn't cut completely through, because as you can see, this is still fairly intact. But what that's good for is now that I've cut this little piece off, what I can do is come down here, and my onion will be a fairly small size. So we're gonna set that aside. Still a little bit larger than what I'd like, so I'm gonna do a rough chop. Add that into our sauce. And we're gonna grab our fish. So our fish, a little bit more brown than what it was earlier, which is exactly what we were going for. So we're gonna set that aside and we're actually gonna finish this sauce 
with a little bit of cilantro. So cilantro normally comes in bunches like this. We really only want about two or three tablespoons of cilantro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna chop, chunk off the top, set the rest aside, and roughly chop the cilantro. You can cut, cut your stems into your cilantro, it doesn't really matter. It's not like rosemary where the, where the stem is actually really woody. Um, cilantro stems are actually pretty easy to eat. And if you cut extra, what you can do is um, set it to the side and you can use it as a topping when you're finished. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bowl, squeeze half of the lime that we had in there. And limes tend to have less seeds than lemons. So if I was doing this with a lemon, for example, I'd probably wanna put cheesecloth over top of it so I don't squeeze the seeds into it. But limes have less seeds than lemons. Going to take our orange and we're gonna cut it lengthwise. Set one of the sides away, cut it lengthwise again, and squeeze that orange in there. So it's gonna make the topping. Once you're done, set that aside, grab a spoon, and mix this all together. While we prep the last of our ingredients, what we're gonna do is we're going to take our corn tortillas. And so these are five or six inch tortillas. We're just gonna throw them in the oven just to warm for a little bit. And now, what we're gonna do is so I have a bowl here, it has about a quarter teaspoon of salt in it. We're going to take about six ounces of Greek yogurt, put it into that bowl. Going to take our other orange half, squeeze it into that bowl, some of our cilantro. We're going to mix this around. It's gonna be a sauce that we line the bottom of our taco shell with almost like a sour cream. So a pomegranate is a really tricky food to cut, which is why I recommend just buying pomegranate seeds and not doing this. But it's a fun little tip, something you show your friends. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a large bowl, set that in front of you. You're gonna take your pomegranate. As you can see, you have kind of a stem on either side of them. And what you're gonna do is grab that pomegranate, kind of stem side up and down cut it in half, and this is gonna make a very bloody cutting board, so to speak. So, as you can see, pomegranate. If you can see on the cutting board, there's a lot of um, pomegranate juice. So what you're gonna do here, is you're actually gonna turn it around, and I would recommend using a big spoon or maybe a mallet. Using a knife isn't really the best thing to do just because you have to hold the blade, but you need something with kind of a lot of oomph behind it to essentially knock out the seeds. So once it's done, so you can see that you have pomegranate juice everywhere, um, especially all in your bowl, but you've pulled a lot of the pomegranates out. You have this pith here, which is kind of just like the connective tissue holding the pomegranate seeds in place. Um, but what you can do now is you can kind of turn it inside out. And since they're all not packed together, you can actually just pull the little pieces, pull the little seeds out. And you may get some of this pith in here. So what you can do is um, fill it up with water. The pomegranate seeds will sink to the bottom. The pith will float to the top and it's an easy way to separate them. Nutrients found in pomegranates include like vitamin E, vitamin A, and vitamin C, um, which are mainly found in vegetables that, or sorry, fruits that grow in a lot of tropical climates or a lot of sunlight. Um, so what's great about these is they can actually help kind of reduce the stress caused by training. So for example, if you're in the gym too much or you're not recovering enough, you could take things such as vitamin E or vitamin um, C to help kind of recover from that. Or you could eat some pomegranate. But there's kind of a caveat to that. Um, it's kind of like people saying you shouldn't take aspirin around training. It's kind of the same thing. Um, for example, if you would, were to take a heavy dose of vitamin C after you go to the gym, it may actually reduce your ability to make gains, um, which means get bigger, get stronger, get faster, um, because we think that, well not we think, we know that the, the stress caused by training actually helps your body adapt so you make gains. So we have one last step in this whole process. I'm gonna grab my tortilla shells, pull them out of the oven, kind of set them aside. They're, they've been warming. One last step. This is kind of, you don't have to do this if you don't want. I just like it because I like the pretty colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this 
red cabbage. It's a big, big vegetable, so be aware of that when you're cutting through it. Maybe use a longer knife. And what you can do, peel off some of these layers. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot at all. So we're actually gonna take this, and what I'm gonna do, here, I'll set that out of the way. I'm gonna take it, I'm actually gonna roll it up. I'm gonna take my knife, it's called a chiffonade, as thin as I can get it. The sharper the knife, the thinner you can actually cut the um, cabbage. But since this cabbage isn't cooked and it's raw, you don't want thick pieces because it'll be chewy. And it'll also, um, it might be a little bit too tart, almost raw tasting for people to enjoy. So that's why you kind of want as thin as pieces as you can get. Grab a plate, grab one of our taco shells, and then grab the sauce that we made, the Greek yogurt sauce. Kind of lay about a tablespoon in the bottom of it. Top it with our fish over here. Pull this up to the side. So you can do about two pieces in there, two or three, depending on how big they were. Two or three. Top it with our loose rustic pico. And then we're also gonna top it with our, about a teaspoon of pomegranate on top there. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to fin it with, finish it with some lime. A little bit of our shaved cabbage. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Again, my name is Andy Barninger and you can find me at The Performance Chef. If you like this recipe, be sure to follow myself and my trend and look out for more stuff in the future.